Hello fellas. Welcome back to top 5 choices. Today's video I am gonna do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best Sony cameras, 2021. After doing proper researches, we came to the conclusion that meets the best in terms of overall. Kindly leave a like if you find this helpful, and I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications if you haven't. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use to for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. We'll be back with more videos. The new A6000 sits in the same place in Sony's mirrorless lineup and offers a broadly similar feature set, but adds a number of significant new features, while also losing the next moniker of its predecessor. The resolution and processor have been bumped up, the most notable feature on the A6000 is its updated hybrid AF system, where the Nex6 had 99 phase detect points covering approximately 50% of the sensor, the A6000 has 179, with 92% coverage, by far the most comprehensive of any contemporary camera. This, combined with the new Bions X processor, allows the camera to shoot continuously at 11 FPS with subject tracking, according to Sony. The company also claims that the A6000 has the fastest AF performance on the market, though those statements should always be taken with a grain of salt. The major changes here are related to the sensor. The new 24 megapixel XMR APS HD CMOS sensor has on chip phase detection like its predecessor, but it covers a much larger area of the frame. Sony promises better AF tracking, especially when shooting continuously. The A6000 uses Sony's latest image processor, Bions X, which touts improved detail and smarter noise reduction as improvements. While the specs of the A6000's movie mode aren't a whole lot different from the Next 6, users now have access to a zebra pattern, a live exposure warning that can be set to indicate a chosen brightness level, and can output clean video over HDMI. The menus have switched to the new alpha style found on the A7 and A7R, for better or for worse, and the camera can now be controlled via a Mac or PC over a USB connection. The Wi-Fi feature is about the same as on the Next 6, offering remote control from a smart device, the ability to transfer images from the camera and options for uploading to the cloud, across Wi-Fi networks. The Sony RX107 is the company's latest pocketable 1-inch sensor compact. It uses the same 24 to 200 mm equivalent f2.8 to 4.5 lens as its predecessor but features a more capable, easier to use autofocus system. This comes in addition to the already impressive capabilities we saw in the Mark V, including very fast continuous shooting and high quality 4K video capture. And, for the first time in the series, the Mark 7 has a mic socket for improved audio recording. The Mark 7 can shoot at up to 20 frames per second with no viewfinder blackout specs that are a match for the company's flagship A9 sports camera. And it's this capability, along with the enhanced AF, that prompts Sony to talk about the power of an A9 in your pocket. To be clear, though, it does not share its hardware with that model. The 24-200mm equivalent lens is the same one used on the Mark V. It offers an f2.8-4.5 to maximum aperture range, which is how the camera is able to be so small, despite the impressive zoom range. The camera's aperture drops off fairly rapidly, reaching f4.0 by about 40mm equivalent. This is already 1f slower than the camera's brightest aperture, meaning it's letting in half as much light, which will mean an image quality disadvantage compared with anything with a brighter lens. Like its predecessors, we feel the RX107 works best as a point-and-shoot camera. It has both a smoothly rotating control ring around the lens, which can be used to adjust a variety of settings, and a small, rather fiddly clicking wheel on the rear plate, if you do want to exercise some control. There's also a touchscreen, but, if anything, the new autofocus system reduces the need for it, especially as it can't be used to operate the camera's FN menu. On a camera you can simply point at your chosen subject, then half press and recompose with a good degree of confidence that it'll keep tracking the right thing, there's little need to manually specify an AF point. The RX107 uses the same NPBX1 battery. It's a 4.5 watt hours unit from which the camera derives a rating of 260 shots per charge using the LCD, for the SEPA standard testing methodology. As always, it's not uncommon to many more shots than this, depending on your shooting habits, we often get a bit more than double the SEPA number, but the ratings are usually broadly comparable between cameras. We find a rating of around 200 shots per charge is just about sufficient for a weekend of occasional shots, where photography isn't your main focus, or half a day's committed shooting. It's low enough that it'll be worth having a recharging plan in mind.
The Sony A7R4 is the company's fourth generation, high resolution full frame mirrorless camera and is built around a BSI CMOS sensor that outputs 60.2 MP images. Relative to previous generations, it promises more robust build quality, refined controls, the company's latest autofocus implementation, and more. Despite its high resolution, it can shoot at up to 10 frames per second with full autofocus and shoot 4K video either from the full width of its sensor or from an APS-C slash Super 35 crop. It also gains a 16-shot high-resolution mode that can be used to generate 240MP images of static scenes. The most visible difference is a much larger AF on button, with longer travel, which will please those photographers who prefer to back button focus. The AF point joystick has also been made much more substantial, ironically, just as the AF system got so good that you rarely need to use it. The next difference you're likely to notice is the high-resolution viewfinder. The A7R4 is the fourth camera we've encountered to use the latest 5.76M dot OLED display and it looks good. There are two quality modes, standard and high. The display quality, high setting makes full use of the viewfinder resolution but uses more battery and may be unavailable at higher temperatures. There's also a fast and standard refresh mode. Using the faster refresh mode gives a more responsive preview, again at the cost of battery drain. This overrides the display quality setting, you can't have a fast and detailed display. The A7R4 uses the same FPZ100 battery as the Mark III. This helps the camera achieve a battery rating of 670 shots per charge using the rear screen and 530 shots using the viewfinder. As always, the precise number you'll get will depend on your usage style, we often get around double the number given by SEPA testing. In general, we found a rating over 500 shots is enough for extended periods of shooting without ever really having to worry about running out, to the point that it's only likely to be wedding shooters who need to have a second battery on hand, for peace of mind, as much as anything else. The camera will charge over both its USB 2.0 micro B connector or its USB 3.0 type C connector. The camera can be operated while being powered over USB, which is especially useful for activities such as time-lapse shooting, where you may need to maintain power for even longer than a single battery could sustain. Sony's A6400 is a compact 24MP mirrorless interchangeable lens camera with an APS-C sensor that will serve plenty of photographers from family documentarians to pro shooters looking for a lightweight second body. The big news is that it has a new processor based on that used in Sony's sports shooting flagship A9 which enables real-time tracking autofocus, which is one of the most effective autofocus implementations we've yet seen. It's also among the easiest to use, once you've gotten it set up. One of the biggest handling updates for the A6400 is the touchscreen. To move your autofocus area on an A6000 or A6300, you had to hit a button to enable the 4-way controller, which doubles, rather fussily, as a rear control dial, and click 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 around. The ability to simply tap on the screen or use it as a touchpad with your eye to the finder makes the A6400 feel far more responsive when you're out shooting, even if the touchscreen's responsiveness isn't all that great. And somewhat ironically, this ease of moving the AF point around comes at a time when real-time tracking largely obviates the need to do so in the first place. This new screen also tilts up by 180 degrees to allow for vlogging, and Sony has certainly been pushing that as a use case for the A6400. But couple the lack of in-body stabilization with the fact that any hot shoe mounted microphone will block almost all of the screen, and we can't help but feel that Sony missed the mark a bit on this one. But the new screen mechanism does allow it to tilt down almost 45 degrees further than before, which is useful. It's also worth mentioning that, while the specifications for the electronic viewfinder show it should be an equal to the likes of, say, Canon's EOS M50, we noticed its quality isn't quite there. In side-by-side -side shooting with the same subject, the A6400 will display noticeably greater amounts of moiré than the Canon, lending the whole view a bit of a crunchy feel. That said, the viewfinder is still of good quality and of course makes it far easier to shoot in bright light rather than relying on the rear screen. And once you enter playback, they look identical in terms of detail. The single card slot sits next to a familiar NPFW50 battery pack. The Sony A7 III has a design that's similar to its more expensive cousins. The magnesium alloy body is fairly light but also ensures durability for long-term use. The outer covering of plastic and rubber feels premium, and the hand grip is of a comfortable size. The body is also designed to resist dust and moisture. You get a good number of customizable buttons, C1, C4, that are spread out across the back and top panels. 
Besides these, you can also remap the functions of the labeled shortcut buttons, giving you more flexibility. We like the placement and feel of the buttons, which have a soft tactile response and don't make any sound. You also get a jog dial at the back for shifting the focus point. Alternately, you can use the touchscreen at the back to set the focus point, even when looking through the electronic viewfinder, EVF. The Sony A7 III has no inbuilt flash, so you'll have to use an external one through the hot shoe. It features two dials on the top, one to change shooting modes and another for exposure compensation. The 0.5-inch OLED EVF has a resolution of 2.3 million dots with a 0.78x magnification. The refresh rate is fixed and can't be changed. Plus, the resolution is a bit on the lower side, so objects viewed through the EVF don't look very sharp. You also get a tiltable 3-inch LCD with a 921K dot resolution and touch support for focusing and zooming in on your subjects. Brightness is good and we didn't have any trouble using the screen under sunlight. On the left side of the Sony A7 III, you have flat-covered microphone and headphone sockets, a micro HDMI port, a USB Type-C, USB 3.1 Gen 1 port, and a micro USB port. On the right of the camera, we have slots for two SD cards, of which only the first one supports UHS-2 cards. There's also an NFC chip for pairing with a smartphone. The A7 III uses a larger capacity NPFC 100 battery which promises more shots per charge, when compared to the A7 II. Here is where we see many of the A9's features trickle down to a lower price point. In the body of the A7 III, there's a 24.2 megapixel full-frame XMR or CMOS sensor with 5-axis stabilization. Just like the A9, the A7 III also gets 693 phase detection autofocus points, in addition to 425 contrast detection points, which covers nearly 93% of the image area. This is massive improvement over the A7 II, which had just 117 TAF points and 25 contrast detection points. The camera also has an impressive ISO range of 100 to 51,200 for both stills and video, and this can be expanded if needed. There's 10 FPS burst shooting with AF-A tracking, as well as a silent mode. IAF is also present, which now works in the AFC mode, 